Welcome back to AWTV. I'm Mark Pizer. With me is Mark Squarek. He is the director of NYU Mobile AR Lab. Uh, you have been a major contributor here at AWE for the many of the years past. Um, you guys have a booth here, just not too far from us, and you're also presenting. Your your presentation is on real estate, urban planning. Uh, tell me about all your contributions here. Like, what's what can we expect to see from Mark to this year? Great, thanks, Mark. Um, so in years past, we've shown uh, a lot of my work from my startup company, which would be Semblance Augmented Reality, um, focused on uh, creation software. Making um, I started with augmented reality pre-mobile, so we were working on uh, like laptops or desktop computers. Sure. Um, at this point, in, uh, basically there were the bar the barrier for entry for users was very high. You'd have to set up your own server. I'd have to it had to be set up the right way. I'd have to populate it with content. The content would have to be set up um, in the correct format, or it wouldn't load. Right. I mean, there are times even when you're loading the model correctly, and it's been scaled so small you can't see it. And the reaction I would have, because I've been teaching a graduate class for about four years now, on, uh, actually six years on augmented reality. Um, when they can't find it, frustration. You get frustration, the technology is too smart for sure. it, it doesn't work. It doesn't, work. It doesn't uh, work, I'm never gonna get into this, it, it didn't work for me, I'm never, I'm never gonna be interested. It, yeah. That's kind of the, the path people may take with, with any technology, right? So what I was doing is, I was doing, um, was basically coming up with an app would allow you to create anything anywhere. So the idea would be, I've got an app, I want an elephant, let's say, on this table, mm -hmm. I don't want it in my hands. Um, I type in elephant, um, I press enter, and okay. then an elephant would appear. Like a scribble knots for AR. Yes. With AR. Okay. And so we populated the database with maybe about 5,000 objects, yeah. and then if it couldn't find anything in our database, then what would happen, it would scrape the internet. So you could basically okay. make anything anywhere with the software. Oh, sure. And with no programming experience whatsoever. Um, so that was uh, one of the larger contributions we thought we made. Um, uh, since this time, uh, we've been re I've been working heavily on uh, creating a mobile augmented reality lab at NYU, as you've mentioned. Yeah. Um, we've got a great group of kids there, graduate students, um, and we've been doing some pretty fun and exciting work. What do these students get when, when they walk in? What, what do they know that they're getting into? Kind of like what may seem like the future of technology for mobile devices. Yes, they they know this. They yes. th they specifically applied for this. How do they show that they are interested and they they deserve to be in your class? I'm gonna be honest. I'm really tough on the students. So okay, I good. Right. No, I mean, if you're gonna go into the workplace, they're gonna be ready. You know, right. like you know, right. it's not an easy, always, always an easy thing. Um, you've got some incredibly hard workers at the lab right okay. now. Um, lead assistant would be Shin Fang Chen. Um, he's an amazing student. Um, and people who are willing to go way above and beyond because they, they have the passion for the technology. Sure. Um, and they're kind of living in the moment right now. It's an incredibly, incredibly exciting time to be in the field of augmented reality. Yeah. Like, I can't, it's happening right I know, now. I know. It's like, it's, like, it's happening yeah. right yeah. now. It's really becoming amazing. What, kind of, what type of students or what type of disciplines are you looking for at NYU? Uh, you know. Engineers, designers, artists. Uh, the first thing, I mean, like on, you sort of, um, sort of touched on the point. We want people with passion. And that would be first and foremost. Somebody okay, sure. who's truly passionate about like the field of augmented reality. How they fit into that, it can be in multiple different ways. Okay. Um, but a person with passion uh, can really go a long ways in our program. We've um, two of our pro uh, top people. One of them's at NASA, basically doing okay. augmented reality research um, for programs they're planning. Um, the other one's at Vuzix right now. Um, so they, okay. they kind of end up at exciting places and are doing big things. Um, the uh, people that we're looking for, and it would be great if somebody's listening, we're looking for programmers, of course. Programmers, would everybody wants programmers. Um, they're, so they're, not, they're too busy <laughs> watching YouTube. They're programming right now. But yeah, we want programmers. Um, People with vision and ideas. Honestly, the way I've always taught my class, uh, the way I've come to class would be I'd stress idea over content or uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Always, the technology is changing so rapidly right now. Yeah. I mean, with the um, Matayo Fernasco that just yes. happened, um, <laughs> I was at the party yesterday and basically everybody that I talked to was talking about how their project was gonna stop working at like you know, around December yeah. <laughs> this year. Um, and you know, it affects me greatly too, but I love working with those guys. Brendan yeah. Scully was like one of my good friends and, okay. um, and they really invested a lot in us. So um, on the, it, they've done a lot for us, it's great. But you are watching the industry change yes. very quickly. It's like a paper house. The thing can kind of, things will happen. But one of the things I like about AWE this mu uh, so much this year is that I see, um, since Mattia was gone, there's somebody there to fill their place. Right, there's enough people, there's enough SDK, there's enough company, there's enough brain power to kind of fill in that gap. Right? Yeah. 
So what do you think those people who felt that they're kind of left, you know, holding the bag, what, what, what will they use? Will, it, will they use Vuforia? A lot of people are talking about Vuforia. Okay. Like you're hearing Vuforia, Dacry, AR Toolkit. AR Toolkit, yeah. There's a lot of different options. Um, some of our needs are very specific. Okay. We, we have very fairly specific needs and it's looking like um, Vuforia might be able to do what we okay. want. We'd be excited to work with them. Um, there's a number of other people we're working with. We're also, um, I'm coming from NYU Polytechnic School of Engineering. Uh, we have a Division One Computer Science Research Department. Um, we've got a very, very strong electrical engineering department. And sure. um, with that, they also have, uh, what do they have? They have um, strong computer vision. They're doing some amazing computer vision stuff right now. So we're, we're partnering with them as well. So we can do stuff in-house and we can also work with um, people on the outside too. Uh, back to NYU and the students. You, your presentation is real estate, urban planning. Tell me about this project that you're working with. Uh, just I want, I want to get an idea of how, what the students uh, get their hands in. You know, in sure, in this, sure. In this lab. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're trying to create the first fully augmented college campus. Okay. Um, I know there have been a number <laughs> of other campuses that have augmentation on top of them. Yeah. But we're talking, we're Full augmentation, like where there's a direct overlay on top of all the buildings. Uh -huh. um, what we're doing is we're actually, we've constructed the full downtown Manhattan, or downtown Brooklyn campus, uh, NYU Polytechnic, and um, we've basically broken that up into each room into an individual model. Right. We're able to link real-time information to those rooms. Okay. So I could see where my class is. If this teacher changes the class, I could see where it's updated oh, wow. to. I could see where my upcoming class is. So you could always see the little visual icon. Um, you won't see, a, um, with our system, you would not see a point of interest. You wouldn't see a POI. POI. You'll actually see the room, the geometry of that yeah. space, and then you'll see how to get there. Um, this, it, I mean, this kind of sounds like a smart city yes. setup, but kind of just you know, uh, enclosed in a like a controlled area, which is a campus, a university campus. So everything that happens within the university campus, all the information is, is is able to be visualized through what you're trying to build, right? Yeah. Okay. That sounds intense. Yeah, it's a lot of work, um, yeah. but it's a lot of fun. And one of the things that we're, we're finding is uh, we're getting a lot of students with passion getting behind it. Like they're okay. getting really, they can see it working. We've got something working. I actually, we're fairly proud of it. It works pretty well. I think sure. we actually have the best looking augmented city on the web right now. If you look at YouTube, we, it looks pretty good. And the guys worked really hard on it. What can, uh, what can people on the internet here, what can they do? Where can they go to see an example of what you guys are building? Sure. Um, so we can go to the, just Google mobile augmented reality lab. Okay. Um, and we should be the top search. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, other things that we're doing in the future, kind of with this augmented city. Um, next semester, what we're doing is we're working with smart buildings. NYU is actually buying most of downtown Brooklyn right now. Okay. And they're, uh, they bought oh. basically a city block for about a dollar. And <laughs> all right, <laughs> that says something about the real estate. It sure does, and where it might be. But. <laughs> they're gutting the entire building, basically. There's wow. th there'll be nothing left of the building. Um, but once they've finished building it, you'll have a state-of-the-art yeah. smart building. So we'll have. Uh, oh, cool! And we'll be able to work directly with those sensors, so that you can see real-time feedback. What's happening in that room, yeah. that space? Uh, what kind of sensors are we talking about? Um, carbon monoxide, heat, um, electrical use, um, gas usage, yeah. uh, water usage. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. You could know if the door was locked. You could know um, different things about this. Oh, okay. the building. So this, this isn't just indoor navigation, like beacons or the Wi-Fi kit. This is you know, actually, things that actually go into the architecture, the actual construction. Yes. Yep. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so next 12 months, what are we going to see coming out of NYU? What's what's Mark going to be showing us next year? Well, it was actually I want to say again, like um, Augmented World Expo this year has been amazing. Um, we've been in contact with some people who are also really excited about our project and if things went the right way we would be doing something phenomenal next year it would okay. be like if if the chips fall into place yeah um, it would be pretty spe like we're talking like countrywide level not citywide level augment the US something like that all right yeah. <laughs> something like that and uh, um, what else would we be seeing from us yeah the smart buildings are things would be fun uh, cool. like having real-time data updating on site yeah. Um, would be something else we're really excited about. Um, yeah. Cool. Mark, look forward to seeing you next year. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Pizer, and this is Mark Squark. We're with AWE.TV. Thanks. Cheers.